Besides Raw and SmackDown, we have NXT, which serves as a brand of WWE that serves as a development branch for Raw and SmackDown. So basically, you can see a lot of newcomers and newer wrestlers figuring out the business and how things work. And once WWE sees that they are ready to go on the main rosters and ready to serve in Raw and SmackDown, that's when they get recruited. Lately, we have, for example, Braun Breaker or what's the name of that Russian guy? Ilya Dragunov. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if he's Russian or German. I think he's half half. I'm not sure. But like people like them who show potential and they are really talented, they like swoosh. Let's go to Raw, let's go to SmackDown, and let's deal with it. So what better than to actually check Best of NXT Greatest Storylines by Wrestle with Andy? <laughs> In historical terms, NXT is still relatively young in many ways. It's like it's since 2010, since right? Yeah. But in that period, it's been able to put out some great storylines. Yes, the developmental show has been no stranger to an entertaining angle or two. But what are the best of these angles? Well, that's exactly what we're going to be looking at right now. And where better to start than with arguably the greatest hey, NXT Gargan story Zola of them all, the saga of Johnny Gargano and Tommaso <laughs> Ciampa. That's right, there was nowhere else we could realistically start with this one, as even now, several years on, this probably in, uh, still ranks Raw, as the high watermark of the black and gold brand. What made this one so great? Well, it involved two of the best wrestlers WWE had on their roster at the time, each operating at the top of their game. And it all started with them undergoing a fantastic tag team run during the mid-2010s. Once Tommaso Ciampa decided he'd had enough of being part of a team with Gargano, however, things would change very quickly, as following their loss to the Authors of Pain at May 20th, 2017's TakeOver Chicago, he'd attack his now former partner and become the oh biggest no. heel on the brand in the process. How would Johnny Wrestling respond to this? Well, he'd be out for revenge. And that mm. revenge would eventually come when the pair took part in a series of high-profile bouts the following year. Sadly though, it seemed like the universe never wanted to see this one get the grand finale it deserved because every time we reached that point, outside forces would put a stop to it. It didn't matter if it was injury or a pesky worldwide shutdown, Gargano Ciampa never managed to get the satisfying conclusion we all wanted it to have. Of course, none of this takes away from how great the feud was outside of that though. No, even if the ending never fully arrived, the journey getting there was unparalleled in terms of the kind of storytelling WWE was putting on at the time. So good was it, in fact, many people still think of this first when they think of great angles from NXT. But it's not the only great angle the developmental brand has had over the years. No, oh. there have been others too. Others which have approached now? this level of greatness. Sure. Hell, there have even been others which centered on partners becoming enemies, as can be seen on our Hayes. next subject, the feud Carmelo between Carmelo Hayes. Hayes and Trick Williams. Oh, yes, I you can call Trick this Williams. one Shawn Is Michaels spin on an old classic because here he took an angle we'd all seen before and made it his own. And the way he did that was to, as Triple H had done before him, take two of the best performers on the show at the time and having them start out the runs by teaming up together. Obviously, okay. though, this wasn't destined to last forever, so after a couple of years of ruling the roost together, with Hayes serving as the leader and Williams the young Padawan in many ways, it became apparent a turn was coming sooner rather than later. Yeah. How did we know a turn was coming? Well, after Trick was laid out backstage by a mystery assailant and Mello began acting a little suspiciously about the entire thing, we could put two and two together and see where things were Sus. going. Before this turn would come though, there would be plenty of moments of teasing the fans as Hayes tried to gaslight both his partner and his fans into believing it was someone else responsible for attacking Trick Willie. Of course, we could all see through this however. And so when Carmelo eventually nailed his now former friend with a steel chair at February 4th, 2024's Vengeance Day, all we wanted was for the babyface to get his revenge. And he would do just this as it happened because, after beating Hayes at April 6, 2024's Stand and Deliver oh. show, Williams went on to beat Ilya Dragunov for the NXT world title just a few weeks later, with this marking okay. the ultimate victory for the up-and-coming star, yeah. as it meant not only had he gotten one over on the man who'd betrayed him, but he'd also become champion too. And with him effectively being run out of NXT at this point, it's left Trick with the whole brand to himself, now free from the influence of Carmelo forever, or at least it'll leave him free from his... It but also it gives Carmelo the space to develop by himself as well. Be 
without being connected directly to someone else i think there is nothing wrong with starting as duo and like literally leashing the power from each other and working together like together stronger but at one point you have to realize that you have to go solo and do your own thing because first of all it is easier to go solo and do your thing than to always be dragged by someone else because that other person can be like can do something really wrong and then drag both of you down like even like when you see like brands and groups of uh, pop stars or whatever like one person can literally ruin the whole group so it is really tough to sign with someone or count on someone if they are not especially if they are not a family member like it would be easier if you are the Uso brothers you know but in this case yeah it's always better to just try and explore a single career or at least it'll leave him free from his influence until the two inevitably find themselves back on the same brand together on the main roster can okay. we expect a satisfying continuation of their story once I that happens? I don't think so. Quite He's possibly, alone as now. with there being a better line of communication between Raw, SmackDown, and NXT these days, the transition process is often a lot smoother, and that's been evident in the rise of Braun Breaker Braun, with man, his rise starting all the way amazing. down in NXT. Like, if anyone, you guys, in my opinion, Braun Breaker is the best. Like, for now, I can see so much potential with this villain. You hate him, but you love him you love to hate him it's crazy and he's so freaking talented like this guy is huge but also so fast like and and and, and he's such a villain and he gives all these like uh, on the mic the comments and everything like they are so good like he's so so professional and young very young so that is really good right he's young i think he's young he looks young during the early 2020s. Now, it should have always seemed obvious to anyone with eyeballs that Braun Breaker was going to be a star, yeah. as he has everything required to get over <laughs> in the halls of WWE. <laughs> After all, he's got the look, he's got the presence, and he can even wrestle too. Back yeah, in the Vince not McMahon only a bit, era, though, a lot. It was never a given that anyone was going to succeed. And so that's why we're lucky Braun managed to find himself going down the correct path right from the get-go then, as from day one, he was treated like a future ace. Need any evidence of this? Well, how about the fact that when NXT morphed into its 2.0 incarnation and a whole new host of characters were added, he was immediately pegged as the top star of these new faces, with this being why he was pretty quickly thrust into the main event picture when he got a chance to challenge then NXT champion Tommaso Ciampa for the title. And the son of Rick Steiner wouldn't just challenge here, no, he'd win. With this being something which immediately put the rest of the roster on notice as to who the new top dog in town who was. The hell what happened are following you? that? Well, Braun's rise continued with him getting big wins over main roster talent such as Dolph Ziggler. Hell, at one point, he'd even score a victory over the mighty Gunter, a rare achievement these days. And by the time his run on top was done then, he'd have made mincemeat of just about everyone there. But even when he <laughs> lost the NXT title, the Georgia native wasn't quite done in the developmental brand yet. No, he still had great heel and tag team runs in him, with his time spent as a duo with Baron Corbin in 2024, probably representing the best work of the Lone Wolf's entire career. Of course, oh. it was always only going to be a matter of time until Braun moved up to the main roster, however, as NXT simply couldn't contain him forever. So yep. that's why in recent months, he's made his way over to Raw, where his path of dominance has continued yeah, seamlessly. Shame. That Aww. said, if he wants to be as dominant as our next subject, he still has a long way to go yet, because when it comes to Asuka, her time in developmental was spent undergoing ah. one of the most impressive undefeated streaks in modern okay. memory. Allow us to take you back to 2015 for a moment, a period many people consider to be the high watermark of NXT as a brand. It was there that after spending the first part of her career becoming a superstar on the Japanese Joshi scene with her murder clown character Kana, Kanako Urai signed on the dotted line with WWE and was there immediately rebranded as Asuka. Asuka. Who was Asuka? Well, as we would soon all find out, she was an unbeatable force of nature. Yes, wow. pretty quickly, the woman who at that point in time could very easily have been called the best female wrestler in the world started racking up victory after victory after victory. It didn't matter who was put in front of her. Dana Brooke, Cameron, Emma, they all fell in short order to the might of the Empress of she Tomorrow. She was too talented come for as no NXT, surprise then right? that before long, Asuka began setting her sights on winning the NXT women's title a title then being held by Bailey, And for as great as Bailey was and is, 
Even she proved unable to stand up to the Japanese phenomenon when the two finally met in the ring with the gold on the line at TakeOver Dallas but then they on became April friends. 1st, 2016. And then they became enemies. That's right. This was the start of a title run which would go on to become legendary in the halls of Full Sail University, as by the time it was over, Asuka would have held the gold for a full 522 days, Ooh. a record which still stands to this day. And it's not even as if anyone would beat her for the belt by the time things were said and done. No, the only reason she lost it at all was because she got called up to the main roster, oh. where she continued on with her undefeated streak on Raw for a while. That's when you of realize, course, like, she okay, isn't the only time. person with a legendary lengthy title run in the developmental brand, however, as a few years later, the same thing would happen with Gunter oh and God, his Gunter. NXT United Kingdom <laughs> title reign. Like yes, we never said this cute. video was going to be limited to the U.S. <laughs> branch of NXT, as the U.K. version certainly had its high points over the years, too being that it first introduced WWE like, fans to the so likes of Rhea friend, Ripley, so Tony Storm, Pete Dunne, and Tyler Bate, just to name a few. That oh. said, of all the success stories of NXT UK, perhaps none are bigger than the man who then went by the name of Walter, as today, he currently stands as one of the biggest stars on Raw and the longest yeah. reigning Intercontinental Champion of all time. Not that lengthy runs on top or anything unusual to him before this, though, but he's because so after talented. winning the NXT UK title from Pete Dunne at TakeOver New York on April 5th, 2019, he'd go on to hold that particular piece of hardware for 870 days a staggering achievement in anyone's book. And it's not as if he had an easy time during this period either because, well, for most of us, navigating a global shutdown was hard enough of yeah. opponents such as Joe Coffey, Tyler Bate, and Ilya Dragunov while he was Ilya. at it. In fact, his match against the latter on the October 29th, 2020 episode of NXT UK was so savage and hard-hating, even the toughest I'm wrestlers out this. there must have winced when they saw the pair knocking absolute oh. loops out of one another, with the empty arena setting to this one, making it so that every point of impact could be heard with painful clarity. But while Walter would win that bout, in the end, it would be Dragunov who took his title from him in an epic rematch almost Aww. a year later at TakeOver 36, with this finally marking the end of one of the most impressive title reigns of all time. How would the Austrian respond to such a loss? Well, as we all know now, he he'd head up to the main Spackle. roster, change his name to Gunter, and there, start a whole new path of destruction. And while he was doing this, yeah. he would have a showdown or two with our next subject, a man who Sammy also Zane holds claim to one of the NXT? greatest stories in NXT history, as it was what? back during the early days of the brand that, that Sami like really Zayn's journey towards then, the world right? title helped establish the entire thing. Now, we all love a good babyface sure chase for the title angle. Hell, there's a reason it worked so well for the likes of Cody Rhodes in recent years. And that reason is because we all like to see the underdog have to overcome the odds and get True. what they deserve. That said, well, Cody... Although, like, in recent days, you feel like Cody's kind of shifting. Like, he is so done being so respectful to everyone. Especially with the AJ style ending there. Everybody's saying he was listening to Mama Rhodes and that's why he threw the stairs at um, AJ style. Even though AJ style already has quit. But at that point, I saw a teeny tiny bit of like frustration and I am done with the baby face thing. So we don't know. Maybe that's the only way they can deal with these heels. You know, like they have to be a bit meaner, like they cannot be too nice because it's getting abused. Cody is certainly a great baby have to overcome the odds and get what they deserve. That said, while Cody is certainly a great baby face, perhaps even he isn't as lovable as Sammy is. And it's for yeah, this reason true, then true, that true. his journey to the top in the mid 2010s was so special. All you Sammy had to do was look at his face face. every time always. he ate a loss during this period <laughs> yeah. and you felt terrible for him. You just wanted to see him succeed so badly. Yeah. So when he eventually managed to string a series of wins together and earn that shot at then champion Bo Dallas then, it felt oh, like the entire Bo world Dallas. was behind the Quebec native. Unfortunately though, this wouldn't be Sammy's moment quite yet. I no, would, Triple H was playing the long game with him and so it was that Adrian Neville, the man better known today as Pac, would be the one who eventually dethroned Dallas anymore, instead. Right? But that didn't mean Sammy was completely down and out. No, he'd continue to work his way back up the ranks until finally, after every hurdle had been placed in his path, he got another one-on-one -on -one shot at the gold at TakeOver Our Revolution on December 11th, 2014. And it was there that in one of the most emotionally satisfying moments in that brand's history, Zayn managed to win the big one and at last hold the title above his head. Sure, he would lose it to Kevin Owens pretty quickly oh. after this, but the title run itself was never the story here. No, the story was Sammy proving to himself that he could beat the champ and that he could be the man, Rocky Balboa style. Mm. That said, not all good stories in NXT have been about people fighting over a belt. No, some have been more about Malachi? the mystery. 
such as was the case with the Isn't 2018 AEW? who attacked Alistair Black angle. Okay, this one did kind of involve the NXT title as the attack happened right as Unless Black was about him. to take part in a three-way bout for the gold against Johnny Gargano and Tommaso like Ciampa. <laughs> but once the current House of Black leader was laid out by a mystery <laughs> assailant on the August 8th episode of NXT, his focus shifted away from the gold and instead moved on to trying Alistair to find Black. out who had dared to strike him in such a cowardly manner. Of course, he wasn't the only one who wanted to find out the answer to this question, though, as over the weeks which followed, fans and performers alike were all Dude, trying to solve- this is Malachi! Is this not Malachi? Wait, Ma- Malachi... Black, yeah, Malachi Black. Where is he now? He's in AEW. Ah, uh, okay, I just really, like, I couldn't, I was so confused. I guess it, he's um, Malachi Black in AEW, but in uh, NXT he was Alistair Black, so. Of course, he wasn't the only one who wanted to find out the answer to this question, though, as over the weeks which followed, fans and performers alike were all trying to solve the mystery, with the only person who seemed to know the answer to the question, outside of the attacker themselves, that was, being Nikki Cross. And Nikki! since Nikki Cross was completely oh God, unhinged I I and her <laughs> couldn't exactly be trusted, this didn't make it easier for Alistair to confirm things. In the end, though, Abigail. he wouldn't have to, because after much speculation, on the October 17th episode of NXT, the attacker revealed themselves to be none other than Johnny Gargano. With this oh. being explained away as Johnny growing jealous that Black had gotten himself tied up in a feud with Tommaso Ciampa that he oh. felt was his and his alone yeah, to deal with. To so obviously then, him. with Gargano now being a heel, it meant that the two would have to have a blow-off at TakeOver War Games just one month later. A blow-off which might very well have been match of the night, and which ended with the babyface getting his revenge in the form of a victory. How would things progress from there? Well, Black would move on to other things, such as teaming up with Ricochet in the 2019 Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic, all before then being drafted up to the main roster and spending a period there, too. No, his time on the main roster wasn't a great run for him, but maybe, if as some have speculated might happen, he eventually returns to WWE once his current AEW contract yeah! runs out. He'll get a second chance at the whip. That's Perhaps what you're waiting time, for. A it's in two or three years, his wife, right? Selena Vega. <laughs> After Selena. all, we all know romance angles in wrestling can work well. NXT True. proved this with their index story during oh. the latter days of the black and gold era. What oh, was there. the story to this one? Well, it was guys. that in early 2021, relatively normal member of the way, Indy Hartwell, Indy, began yeah, finding herself to be the object of Dexter. Like, the thing about Indy, when she just appears at the stars, I was like, who is this girl? What, what is it? But then she really proved herself in the ring with the latest clash at the castle. Um, after that, like, I have a huge respect towards her, and I can see her career developing even further. Maybe she should just, like, go solo a bit as well. After Loomis's affections. And since Loomis was a mute, apparent serial killer whose only way of showing love was to act in the strangest manner possible, it's understandable she was a Is bit really freaked mute? out by this at first. As time went on though, Dexter began slowly <laughs> winning over the object of his affections like with his unique charms. And this eventually led to the two becoming a bit of an on-screen item. Something Aww. which, at least initially, drew the ire of indie stablemates Johnny Gargano, Candice LeRae, and Austin Theory. Of course, eventually they'd come to love Loomis too though, and so it was after months of a whirlwind romance, everything would culminate in a marriage proposal on the August 17th Aww, episode of NXT. But in a twist to the way these things usually go, it wouldn't be the man who did the proposing here. No, instead what? it was Hartwell who made her intentions clear, with the wedding being set to go ahead from there on September 14th, the date of the first NXT episode under the new 2.0 rebranding. Oh, we didn't need to That's see right. That. It was, <laughs> it was quite a way to kick off a new era, and while it wasn't exactly Randy Savage and Miss Elizabeth, it oh, was still a memorable segment ever. and a worthy conclusion to one of NXT's most memorable angles over the years. But is Sadly, this though, real? This would also mark the beginning of the end for the couple, because pretty soon after their marriage was made official here, Loomis would find himself out of a job, and so the two would be separated once more. But even if it was a sad way for things to conclude, anyone who's spent any length of time watching wrestling should know that breakups are the way things so often go. After all, it's the way our next great angle eventually yeah. ended, with that being the story of the Undisputed Era. Yes, back oh. in the latter half of the 2010s, there was no more Who dominating force in NXT than that which was made up of Adam Cole, Kyle O'Reilly, Bobby Fish, and Roderick Strong. 
And the reason for that was because when all four men were paired together, their <laughs> combined skills made them nigh on unbeatable. Yes, it didn't matter who was going up against them, the Undisputed Era almost always stood tall. And this was why at one point they were quite literally dripping in gold when Cole was NXT World Champion, all Roddy the guy. North American Champion, and Red Dragon the Tag Team Champions. Unfortunately though, as with all good things, this one had to end eventually, yeah. and so it was that after years of making things like war games their own, dissension began to sow itself amongst the ranks of the stable when Kyle O'Reilly went on something of a main event singles run in 2020. Singles How would Adam run, Cole respond to both this and O'Reilly's subsequent attempts to have Finn Balor join the UE? Well, with extreme jealousy, which was exactly why at TakeOver Vengeance Day on February 14th, 2021, he just about kicked the Vancouver native's head off with a super kick, Oops. a move which formerly marked the downfall of the stable. Yes, now with Cole and O'Reilly at odds, Whoa, it was left to chains? fish and strong to choose sides, with this all eventually becoming too much and causing the whole thing to implode. Sure, all parties involved would eventually try to rebuild these friendships when they later moved over to AEW, but even that couldn't last forever it seems, because with the wounds from that initial attack running too deep, we're now looking at a stage where it doesn't look like we'll ever see all four members of the Undisputed Era on the same page again. Mm. Needless to say then, that's a crying shame because when they were at their peak in NXT during the late 2010s and early 2020s, there was quite simply no one who could match up to them in terms of either their ability in the ring or their sheer force of strength and numbers. So, pour one out for the UE, arguably the greatest stable to ever do it on the developmental brand. Well, that is if we don't count our next group as an official stable, of course, what? because while they were never all on Becky. the same page in kayfabe, the bonds that tie the four horsewomen Ooh. together remain strong throughout their Selena. entire time on the black and gold brand. Is that and this led to one of the no. best overarching stories in the show's history. Now to tell this one properly, we need to go back to December 12th, 2012. That was the day Sasha okay. Banks had her first televised oh, match Banks. against that's Paige, so and in the process became the first of the four horsewomen to appear on WWE TV. People are saying that of she course, she be wouldn't back. be the only one there for long, though, because over the course of the 12 months which followed, Charlotte Flair, Bailey, and Becky Charlotte Lynch Flair. would also join her. And with each of these four performers quickly proving themselves to be stars in waiting, it led to a heated competition breaking out to see who would reach the top first. Not that they Becky? weren't friends behind the scenes, though. No, so close would the quartet Charlotte? become that at one point, Charlotte's father, Ric Flair, would be so upon them the name of the four horsewomen. On That's screen, why though, people love things her. were far less civil as each wanted to be the top dog in the division. And this yeah. all memorably climaxed in a four way bout between them at TakeOver Rival on February 11th, 2015, to this date, the only time that match has taken place. Who They're won this one? Wonderful well, that would be girls. Sasha Banks, with her victory here spinning oh, okay, her Sasha. off into even better singles bouts against the likes of Bailey and Lynch. But then all four of the horsewomen oh, could be counted women. on to have a great singles match with one another by then, and this was something they proved again and again, right up until the point their era on the developmental brand came to a figure at end when three of their members, namely Banks, Flair, and Lynch, were called up to the main roster on the July 13th, 2015 oh. episode of Raw. What happened after that? Well, they Six just match? kept on dominating. Now on the main mm. roster instead. And when Bailey eventually joined them on the A show, the their reign of dominance only got anymore. stronger. That said, had they not first proven they could be such stars with such a great story in NXT, then things might never have reached this point. But then that just goes to show the importance of the developmental show and its ability to captivate us Definitely. with some of the tales it's weaved over the years. All of these people who came from NXT, oh my god, like every single one of them, such a talented person, which brings me to the realization that NXT is such a good thing for wrestlers and for WWE. Like whoever came up with the idea did a great job. And I don't know if Triple H was the one who started with NXT or Vince, but good job. Yeah, that's it. Have a wonderful day and see you tomorrow with a brand new video. Bye!